Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy. Woo! <laughs> okay. So today, I bring to you the New York State Compound and Exam IV preparations focused specifically on infusion rates. So let's do this. So what are infusion rates? Now, let's break this down. Rates has a relationship with time, right? So infusion rates is just saying, what is the relationship between this medication and time? And usually when they say this medication, they're referring to like IV medications, right? A bag of solution that's given into the patient's vein usually over a certain amount of time. So that's exactly what infusion rates are. Now, infusion rates can be adjusted based on many things. So that's one of the beauty of being able to like infuse a medication into a patient's vein because some of them you could adjust like the dose right based on the patient's blood pressure is it too high is it too low the patient's pain the patient's uh pain response is it is the patient well controlled or the pain on the pain or not if not then we we will, we will give the patient right more medication by increasing the infusion rate by increasing the amount of medication the patient will get over a period of time right or toxicity or efficacy so that's one of the benefits and that's something we can't do with oral medications uh usually right like you can't you can't titrate how much the patient is getting right there in order to change the effect now infusions could be bolus so this is usually a large amount of medication and that's usually given over a small interval of time i've seen medications in oncology where it wasn't it's not like a large amount of volume right the volume itself may be may be small but the medication the amount of medication the patient is getting that's usually large so that's that's what it means by here the medication the amount is large but it could also apply to let let's say the volume of the bag is 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 big, right? It's, if it's high, and if you give that over a small interval, that's a bolus. Then you have continuous, where you're giving it over a slower rate, little by little, over an extended period of time. Then we have intermittent. Now intermittent is just saying how often should the patient get this, right? So yes, the patient is going to get this IV medication that's going to be infused over one hour. But how often are you going to give this patient this medication? Maybe it's every eight hours, every 12 hours, once a day. But that's a little different from the infusion, right? The infusion time itself. Now here's a picture of an official New York State board label for the IV preparations. We have the patient's name here on the top, the room number, and the additive. The additive is usually the medication itself, the active ingredient. So let's say vancomycin, right? Vancomycin powder, so 500 milligrams powder. And I'm going to add this to a solution of normal saline, for example, or dextrose. And here's the infusion rate expressed in volume over time okay but it could be expressed in many different units and we will see on the next slide and we also have it in drops per minute preparation day expiration date the time the doctor um as you can see the label has a lot of parts you need to fill out so just make sure you pay attention to it make sure you fill out everything because last thing you want to do is lose points because you didn't write something on a label like you know what I mean? So make sure you just double check that. Now, infusion rates, like I said, could be presented in, in many different ways. And you must know how to convert among these. Okay, so usually they provide you with the right information to allow you to convert from one into the next one, depending on what the question is asking for, really. Okay. As you can see here, we have the volume over time, then we have amount over time. Amount over time can also be presented with the patient's weight in there, which also could technically be done with the volume over time also. But that's just a, another way. It's like an extra step, really. It's not difficult at all. It's just an extra step. So think of it like that. 
All right, we have some here with the BSA. Okay. Now let's take a look at some some questions right away. You know, we don't want to waste time, right? Woo! <laughs> okay. So when you get the question, it's usually going to be on a prescription. Something very similar like this, where you have the patient's name, your room number, right? This goes on a label. Um, some patient-related information, right? The patient's weight, age, height, the doctor, and I guess their specialty, right? So this prescription is asking for two milligrams of epinephrine and to put this into a 250 ml bag. Okay, no problem. Let's see what our pharmacy has. Our pharmacy has this epinephrine solution in a 10 cc vial. And the uh, drop is set in let's say the IV pump, it's set to drop it's set to it's set to do 20 drops per ml. Okay. So like if you're thinking about this, I mean it makes sense, right? You're just gonna take a certain amount, right, of volume in here to get this two milligrams, and you're gonna put it in your normal saline bag. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so we have this epinephrine. Um, vial, let's just say, is 10 ml. The script is requesting 2 milligrams. Now, every time you see a ratio like this, and this is something I guess you could like take note of this, the 1 is in grams and the 1,000 is in mls. If they don't put specific weights, um, specific units, I should say, for example, if it doesn't say 1 to 1,000 weight over weight or W over W, you should always assume that it's always going to be amount and volume, right? Like like weight and volume, I should say. So grams and a thousand ml. Unless they specify that, let's say, it's volume over volume or ml over ml, over ML I should say. ML over ml, uh, weight over weight. Um, so unless they specify that, that's always going to be the ratio, okay? One gram and a thousand ml. That's that's just the concentration of it, right? So for every a thousand ml total of this epinephrine, there's gonna be one gram of active ingredient of epinephrine in there, all right? So we simplify this further. We get a thousand milligrams per thousand ml. We cross multiply and we solve for two milligrams, and you will find that you just need two mLs of the. You just need two mLs from this epinephrine vial that the pharmacy has to get your dose of two milligrams. <coughs> Sorry. Mm. I'm going to drink some water. Okay. So now you have your two mL. You draw it up from this epinephrine vial and then you put it into the bag of normal saline, the 250 mL bag. Then they ask you what would be the drip rate in... And um, what would be the uh the drip the drip rate to the nearest full number of drops per minute? So they want the answer in um drops per minute. Okay, no problem. Drops per minute is what is volume to time, right? Volume to time. Okay, so right then I'm going for the volume, which is this. This is the only one that has a volume in here. Okay, so I'm going for that. It's, it's usually the bag. So you just literally have to find. Okay, so here, 20 jobs. The pump is set at 20 jobs equals to 1 ml, like I read previously. You're doing 2 milligrams per minute, right? 2 milligrams per minute, right? Because they want the drip rate in jobs per minute to get this. So 2 milligrams per minute is the same as 2 ml per minute. How do we know that? It's because of the concentration, right? The concentration is one to one. A thousand milligrams per every thousand ml. So the concentration is one to one. So you could literally convert over. Okay. So for every one milligram of for every for every one milligram you have one ml. That's the concentration. Right? So then you just use the amount of drops needed, the dropper, whatever it's set at. You multiply and you get 40 drops per minute.
okay? So this is pretty straightforward. Um, so we could take a look at the next question now. So here they're asking for KCL five uh, milli equivalents and two ml of like I guess it's multivitamin and hundred ml D five, right? So once again, you check the pharmacy to see how will I get this five MEQs of KCL. This is what's supplied. How will I get this two ml of multivitamin, right? This is what's supplied. So the multivitamin is pretty easy, right? Draw, take out two ml from a 10 ml vial, right? But the KCL, they said take out five MEQs from a vial with this concentration. So you don't really know how many mLs it's gonna be. So that's when you set up your proportion and you solve for how many mLs is gonna be five MEQs. You cross multiply and you find that you get 2.5 ml. Now what would be the drip rate to the nearest full number of jobs per minute? Once again, you go back to the bag itself. <clears throat> So it's 100 ml, and they usually tell you how much they run it over for. <clears throat> 100 ml infused over one hour, right? So you're going to give 100 ml over one hour. The question is asking for drops per minute. So automatically, I'm going to convert this one hour into 60 minutes, right? Um, so I think this was supposed to say every one hour or 60 minutes. So 100, 100 ml over 60 minutes is 1.66 ml per minute. <clears throat> and I did this to allow me to get mLs here and just multiply by 10 drops per mL to get my answer at 17 drops per minute. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward, right? This is another good question here. So once again, they want heparin, 8,500 units, <clears throat> and 500 mL D5W, but they're telling you to infuse 1,000 units per hour. All right, just give a thousand units per hour. How will I get my heparin? Well, in the pharmacy, we have this heparin solution that's a thousand unit per ml. How many mLs of that would I need? Pretty simple, right? 8.5 ml. 85,000 unit of heparin is needed for this prescription. The heparin is supplied as a thousand unit per ml. If you cross multiply and solve for it, you're going to get 8.5 mLs that you need to draw up. And you're going to put it in the bag. You're going to put it in the 500 ml D5. <coughs> Sorry. 500 ml D5W bag. <laughs> right? And then you're going to answer the next question, which is the same question. What would be the drip rate to the nearest full number of drops, <coughs> drops per minute? Okay, what would be the drip rate? You take 500 ml, right? You take 8, you put, you take... 85, I should say 8,500 units, and you put it in 500 ml, right? The concentration of that bag is 17 units per ml, okay? They want you to infuse 1,000 units, okay? You got to know how many mLs that is, right? So 1,000 units over 60 minutes, right? That's what they said. It's 16.6 .6 units per minute, all right? 16.6 .6 units and mLs is 0 0.97 and then you multiply that by 10 and you get 10 right because this is basically one I hope you guys see what we did here right we simply had to know because they get okay this is a volume right since it's a, it's a concentration this we could find how many like how much volume will a thousand units of heparin be in right from from the bag <clears throat> so that's exactly what I did all right, so I got that, okay? So technically, I could have done that and skipped this part, but anyways. So I was given 1,000 units, right? Because this, this stepwise makes more sense. So I'm given a, I'm given 1,000 units over 60 minutes, right? Or that if you divide it, you get 16.6 .6 units per minute, okay? And then this is just convert it back into mLs to know how much like how much mLs, right? How many mLs is per minute. Yeah, so it's 10 drops per minute. I don't want to over explain this, but I feel like I just did. <laughs> I just want to make sure you guys um really understand this cuz this is not that complicated really. Just follow through and just try to make sense of it. Okay? 
So gentamicin, okay, one milligram per kilogram. They want you to put this in 50 ml D5W. Hmm, pretty straightforward. Once again, where am I going to get my gentamicin from, okay? And even if I know where I'm going to get it from, it's in volume. So how, many, how much am I going to draw up, okay? It's right here, one milligram per kilogram. You got the patient's weight. Convert that into kilogram, right? Oh. Oh, I guess I didn't put that, but <clears throat> I believe one one thirty divided by uh, two point two one thirty two right one thirty two divided by two point two is sixty right so I just had to double check. So you need what sixty milligrams because it's one milligram per kilogram. I need sixty milligrams of gentamicin. Based on what we have in the pharmacy, I would need one point five mL. Now, what would be the drip rate to the nearest phone number? Once again, you go back, you take 50 mLs to be given over 20 minutes. You don't care about the every 8 hours. You're only given the bag for 20 minutes. Okay? The every 8 hours is just how often you give the bag. But how long do you give the bag? That's over 20 minutes. You do the math, you get 25 drops per minute. Next question, back trim, 600 milligrams per 120 milligrams in 250 ml D5 every 12 hours infused over one hour. I hope I'm bringing you guys like good variety of these kind of questions, right? It's not like the same type. Each script is like a little bit different, right? So that's good. So once again, where am I going to get this back trim? Hmm, I checked the pharmacy. Is this all we have? No problem. Let's go into the lab. Back trim is those based on the trimethoprim, right? The TMP, trimethoprim component, okay? So that's the second number. So when they, that's the second number on the script. So it's 120 milligrams. But when you come into the pharmacy, it's the first number. So it's a little tricky. So it's those based on that, all right? So in this case, it's like look, just looking at 60, 16 milligrams per ml. But you need 120 milligrams, right? So you just solve for it, and you're going to get 7.5 ml. And you'll find that that 7.5 ml will also give you 600 milligrams of the sulfur methoxazole. So like this... <coughs> they set it up perfectly for you, okay? I can't imagine if... If the 7.5 ml would have gave you more than you need or less of the uh, of the sulfur methoxazole, but exactly the amount of trimethoprim you need. No, they wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> At least not in this kind of question. Once again, what would be the drip rate in drops per minute? Oh, look. Go back. Take the bag, 20, 250 mLs. How often they want it? They usually tell you the infusion rate. The infusion rate. So read it. They want you to give it over one hour or 60 minutes. Right? You multiply by 10 drops, right? 10 drops per mL. You get 42 drops per minute. Straight forward. This, is one, this one is good. So we have 500 mL of a D5 uh, half NS. With 18 MEQs of potassium chloride and 6 milli equivalents of max sulfate. So, don't get confused here. There's only two active ingredients, right? And also the fact that what they have in the pharmacy is kind of kind of gives you that kind. The 500 ml is just your bag, right? In this case, it's D5 with half an S. So, that's a type of bag you may see. Okay, so just keep that in mind. <clears throat> or they may say like there's some amount of like there's 10 milli equivalents of potassium in here but the scripts wants 20 right and you gotta account for that 10 also you know like it, they could play around with that i haven't seen that but i guess it's possible but let's not overthink this they need 18 meqs of kcl and 6 meqs of mag sulfate Okay, so we have this supplied in the pharmacy, and right here they said four MEQs of a magnesium and one ml. Pretty straightforward, right? Set up your proportion. Um, you need you're gonna need nine ml of the KCL, 
and 1.5 ml of the max sulfate. What will be the drip rate to the nearest full number of drops per minute? Once again, they tell you our an they give you the answer right here. Infuse over 12 hours. Infuse 500 ml over 12 hours. How many minutes is 12 hours? 720 minutes. You divide, you're gonna get 60 drops. You get <clears throat> sorry, you get you get your answer here, 0 0.694. Not your answer, but that's what you get per ml per minute when you divide. Multiply by 60 drops per ml, and that's your answer. Straightforward, right? We have another one here, 100 ml of sodium chloride. 3% and D5W over 30 minutes stat. That means we got to do this question fast. Okay, so let's go. So this is what we have in the pharmacy. How many, <laughs> no. How many milliliters of sodium chloride? 23.4% is needed to fill this prescription. The prescription wants 3%, right? In other words, what is 3%? That's three. actually 3 grams of sodium chloride in 100 ml. <clears throat> Whenever I have percent, that's how I convert it, right? Percent means 100, so I always, the, the three, that means gram, right? So three grams. Like when I have the when I had the one gram with the ratio to 1,000, right? Uh, the last part was that ml, and it was 1,000 ml. This one is just two zeros. It's 100 ml. So it's three grams per 100 ml. Really? That's all you want? We got you. This is all I have in the pharmacy, but if you look closely, this is what? <clears throat> oh, where did I put it? But this is 23 grams per 100 ml, okay? The prescription is requesting 3 grams, okay? Set up a proportion, 23.4 grams, because it's 23.4% of NS that you have in the pharmacy. <clears throat> you set up the proportion and you drop, you get 12.8 ml for you to draw up and um and put in the bag and that will give you your three percent. What would be the drip rate to the nearest full number of drops per minute? Once again, folks, you go back. How how big how much is in the bag? A hundred ml over thirty minutes. They tell you the answer. Don't miss this. A hundred ml over thirty minutes. You divide it as three point thirty three mls per minute. And then <clears throat> it's, it's set as 15 drops per ml. You multiply, you get 50 drops per minute. Question eight. Hang in there with me, guys. We're almost there. But you're getting different versions of these questions. If you practice, you should not get any of these wrong. It's so straightforward. Calcium leucovorin injection. We need this much in 50 ml NS and infuse it over 20 minutes. Okay, where am I going to get my... Leucovorin. Okay, we have some leucovorin powder in the pharmacy. Um, it's 50 milligrams, but we can't. It's not like we could draw up powder and just put it into this solution. It's not. It's probably not even gonna be stable, right? But here you have to reconstitute it. So you reconstitute it with 10 ml of sterile water for injection, and this is gonna be a concentration. So this is what I have. This is what I need. 10 milligrams per meter square, okay? So, this is the formula that I use for the body surface area, or meter square. So, we're going to use this to solve this. Um, so, my BSA was 2. According to the question, the prescription was 10, 10 uh, milligrams. I should have put milligrams here. Yeah. 10 milligrams per meter square, <clears throat> which is 2. So, we get 20. Available leucovorin is 5 ml, so we need 4 ml of leucovorin. What would be the drip rate? Oh my goodness. I know you guys are tired of this. Once again, 50 ml over 20 minutes. Not 6 hours, folks. Don't you dare put 6 hours. Over 20 minutes. Okay. And I'll give you 2.5 ml per minute. And remember, they put this. They told you 20 drops equals to 1 ml. You multiply 50 drops. Easy. Two more questions. Three more questions. Sorry. Another version, you know. So I'm just trying to like, this one is a good one too. Oh, look. Once again, you have two active ingredients. Okay. 
I don't want to, I guess you could, I don't want to say that the one with the volume is always the diluent. Like, it's kind of obvious, especially if it's 100 ml, right? If it's 100 ml, that's like, that's the diluent, most likely. So these are the active ingredients. <clears throat> but this could have been a little bit tricky, just because it has basically the NS right next to that. But then, you know, whatever the pharmacy has kind of gives you an idea of the active ingredients. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> How much magnesium sulfate I need? 0 0.3 MEQs per kilograms. Not a problem. I'm going to get the kilograms here, multiply, and get my answer. How much NaCl I need? I need 0.9%. Okay. So we come here. Um, so if you multiply with the kilograms, you get 6.81 MEQs needed. The max sulfate is available as 4 MEQs per ml according to what's in the pharmacy for the max sulfate, okay? We get 1.7 ml. For the NaCl, you need 0.9%, okay? 0.9% is 0.9 grams per 100 ml. The NaCl is 4 MEQs per ml. How will I know that? How will I know? Because the only way to get this is if I convert into ml. I mean, it's a uh, milli equivalent, right? In order to get the amount of ML I need. <coughs> so, to solve for how many MLs you need, you need to know the relationship between MEQs and grams of NaCl. And you just literally need to know one of them. 0.9%. 100 ML of 0.9% normal saline has 15.4 MEQs of sodium chloride and yes you have to memorize this i'm pretty sure there is a way you can actually solve for this as much as longer you know but there is as pos it's possible that you could solve for it i'm going to show you how to do it in in um in some future videos but it's possible but if you want to keep things very simple just memorize this 15.4 meqs and every 100 ml of normal saline and with this, you can set up proportions and get different answers, okay? And different um, different uh, volumes of NaCl and, you know, and you're going to be good. So for how many ml of available NaCl was supply? Sorry. 15.4 MEQs. The answer is 3.85. What will be the drip rate? <laughs> oh, God. Should we even go over this part? I mean, come on. 100 ml infused over two hours they give you the answer that's 120 minutes you divide you get 0 0.833 mls per minute multiply that by 60 per minute 60 drops per minute your answer is 50 drops per minute yes it is <clears throat> here we have two so 250 ml dopamine infusion and ns Concentration of 1,600 micrograms per ml infused at. You guys, look, when you see the prescription written like this, all you got to say is, you don't scare me. I am going to tear you apart. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. So, we don't even, how much dopamine do we need to add into this 250 ml dopamine infusion to make it? We don't know. All we know is the concentration okay no problem so this is the concentration which is um 1600 micrograms per ml right but the whole bag is 250 ml so in that we're gonna have 400,000 micrograms or 400 milligrams available dopamine comes as 80 milligrams per ml therefore you need 5 ml didn't we just destroy that part I'm telling you it's not that complicated okay and if it is, let me know. Okay, I will share more questions with you guys and you know, help you guys get better. That's my goal, okay? So either way, you're gonna be good. What will be the drip rate <laughs> once again to the nearest full number of drops per minute? I'm not even gonna go over this part. Should I? Okay. Ten micrograms per kilogram, okay. The patient is 70 kilos, 10 times 70 is 700 micrograms per minute, right? Or 0 0.7 milligrams per minute. So based on the concentration of the bag, 
find out how many uh, mLs is 0 0.7 milligrams, and we found that it was 1.6. No, no. What was it? <clears throat> 400 milligrams into uh, 1.6 milligrams per mile. I guess I didn't include the next step. But you just have to set up a conversion to find... Um, Wait, did I do that? Wait, can I... Sorry, guys. I just want to double check this. Um, so the 400 divided by 250, that is the concentration, okay? <clears throat> but we have 0 0.7 um, milligrams, so it's going to be 0 0.7 divided by 1.6, and it's 0 0.43 mLs. Oh, wow. Times 60. So it's 26, actually. I don't know where I got this from. So this is supposed to be 26, guys. I think what I did was that once I got the concentration of the of the bag, right? Because they just want you to infuse um, 0. Point, wait, they just want you to infuse 700 micrograms per minute. Okay, that's all they want you to infuse. So it's 0 0.7 milligrams per minute. And based on the concentration of 400 milligrams. Yeah. All right, so this is supposed to be 26. Sorry, guys. I just had to, like, make sure I wasn't going crazy, which apparently I was since I put 96. But last but not least, so this is the bonus infusion rate question. I just decided to call it that because if I didn't, I would have had 11 questions, right? And I, this is not supposed to be RX25. It's supposed to be RX11. So with this, we have drug X given as 150 milligrams per meter square per day, right? We have the formula to get the meter square, so we are not worried. Drug Y comes in 2 milligram. Drug Y, 2 milligrams in 100 ml D5. This is a little confusing. It shouldn't be. They just saying take, add this amount of drug X, add this amount of drug Y, two milligrams, and put in a hundred ml. Okay, and infuse over thirty minutes every eight hours. <clears throat> now drug X, we do the BSA thing. We got zero point eight. Um, zero point eight allowed us to get that. We need one hundred and twenty milligrams of drug X per day, right? But when you're calculating these prescriptions, it's not it's not usually per day. It's usually they want to know per bag, right? How much would you need per bag? So you have to divide by three because the patient is getting it three times a day. And this answer is in per day. So divide by three to get every eight hours. So it'll be 40 milligrams in each bag, right? So based on the concentration, we find that we need... 0 0.8 ml. Drug Y, pretty sim uh, straightforward. It comes as 1 milligrams per ml after you reconstitute it with sterile water for injection. And you find out that you need, you know, 2 milligrams. So you just need 2 ml. What will be the drip rate? One last time, ladies and gentlemen. Take the bag, 100 ml. Infuse it over 30 minutes. Okay, you get 3.3 mLs per minute, and then you get 60 drops per minute. <clears throat> 60 drops per minute is what the, the thing is set at. You multiply, you get 198 drops per minute. That sounds crazy, right? But that's the answer. Let me just double check for you guys. Sorry, sorry. Don't end the video. Wait, I'm almost done. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I got it. Whoa, this is 200. Okay, whatever. You just divide, guys. 3.3 ml. 100 ml divided over 30 minutes. You get 3.33, I believe, right? Divided by, I mean, times times it by 60. One night, so it's 200. It's 200. I think I got 198 because I just left it as 3.3. Yep. All right. So that will be the end of this video. I apologize if it was really long, but I just wanted to make sure I explained it the best way possible for you guys to be able to understand. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe 
and leave feedback and comments okay remember i'm here for you guys so if there's anything i could do to improve the teaching or any clarifications just let me know okay think of me as your personal teacher so feel free to come with me with any questions all right take care